All right, in, in this video, I would like to tell you about how to handle an elevator problem. Um, I, there's a lot of ways to do this, but there's only one really good way to, to do an elevator problem, and that is just to rely on Newton's second law of motion. There's other ways that are kind of convoluted, and I don't want you to use those. So let's take a look. Here's a person in an elevator. Uh, here's the cable of the elevator. The person standing, say, on a bathroom scale. Do you know that bathroom scales only give you the normal force? They don't tell you your weight. They tell you the normal force that it pushes up on you with. Okay, let's say this person has a mass M. And <clears throat> so the weight of this person is mg. Now, if this person isn't accelerating, if this person is not accelerating, then um, the normal force will equal this. That's why he's not accelerating. But let's say the elevator is accelerating upward. If it's accelerating upward, then this the person better be accelerating upward too. And the way the person accelerates upward is they have a net force on them. So if we want to find the acceleration of the elevator, what we do is we say A equals F net over M. And if F net is, if the normal force is bigger than mg, then the person will accelerate upward. So A equals, if Fn is bigger, then I'm going to say Fn minus mg all over m. Let's put in some numbers. Let's say this person is um, 50 kilograms. And let's say um, the normal force, the scale reading, is reading... Um, let's say uh, 600 newtons. Then let's see what the acceleration would be. A equals, now the downward force is 500 newtons, and the upward force is 600 newtons. So we got 600 newtons minus 500 newtons, all over 50 kilograms. So if you work that out, the A is 2 meters per second squared, upward. In fact, I probably should draw this normal force bigger, like obviously bigger, so that you get the sense that he does have a net force on him. Notice that we don't know which way the elevator is moving. It, we just know it's accelerating upward. It, we don't know which way it's moving because the ex, you could be there's two ways to accelerate upward. One is to be heading downward but slowing down. Another way is to be heading upward and speeding up. <clears throat> but we don't know which one that is. All right, let's do one more just for practice. This is going to be a short video because the physics of an elevator just isn't that bad. I mean, it's it's very straightforward. Okay, um, let's let's have here's another person in an elevator. Um, here's the that's the bathroom scale, and let's say I, I won't draw the elevator this time, but he's in this elevator, and let's say um, the person is forty kilograms, and let's say that the normal force reads, the scale reads um, 300 newtons. Well, if we draw the forces on the person, we have a, a force of 400 newtons and another force of 300 newtons upward due to the bathroom scale. So A equals F net over M a equals, now I'm going to say this time the, the downward force is winning, so I'm going to put that one first. So it's 400 newtons minus 300 newtons all over 40 kilograms. So what is the acceleration? It's 100 divided by 40 or 10 fourths meters per second squared, downward. Why downward? Because that's the direction of the net force. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Of course, we don't know if the person's moving downward. We just know that they're accelerating downward. Okay, one last one. I call these elevator problems, but they could just be um, a ball on a string. So here's a bowling ball connected to a string. And let's say that um, the bowling ball is um, three kilograms. And um, if I told you that the ball is accelerating upward, A is upward, um, at two meters per second squared, and I asked you for the tension, then you just draw your force diagram. So I know there's 30 newtons down. Now I know there's got to be more than 30 newtons up. So I'll make that bigger than this one. And so A equals F net over M. See, if you always go this route, then every problem is not different from each other. They're all kind of the same. And that's what I want you to see. So A, 2 meters per second squared equals the net force, I'm going to put Ft, I know Ft is bigger, minus 30 newtons, all over 3 kilograms. So I'm thinking Ft, when I solve for this, is um, 36 newtons. One more. <clears throat> what if instead... This bowling ball is coming through, it's a, it's a pendulum, and it's coming through an arc. So it's going in a circle, and it comes through like that. And I want to know what the tension is in this wire. And I'm told that it's going through, and um, R is 10 meters. And I know the speed right at the bottom, right there, is um, let's go with four meters per second. What will be the tension in the wire? Again, we'll just start with A equals F net over M. But this time it's going in a circle. And so I'm going to say A is V squared over R. That's equal to the net force. Now the net force, if I show you the force diagram, it's MG. Mm -hmm. and Ft up. Those are supposed to be collinear, though it doesn't look like it. Okay, so I know Ft is winning because it's accelerating toward the center of the circle, so I'm going to say Ft minus mg all over m. So if I want to know what Ft is, just solve. That's what will get me there. So the, the tension force is going to be, oh, I would need to give you the uh, mass of this ball. So let's make the mass of this ball. Um, I think last time we said it was 3 kilograms. So that would be 3 kilograms times 4 meters per second squared, meters per second, that whole thing squared, all over 10 meters plus <clears throat> m, 3 kilograms, times g. And so there you have it. I'll stop there. Thanks.